Hello and welcome to the official show film from Tanks, Trucks and Firepower 2020. We start with our wheeled vehicles before we have our heavy recovery in the main arena and then we have two helicopters land. Next up it's a midday guns followed by heavy tanks and then we have professional drivers putting two CVRTs through their paces in our driving and pyrotechnic display. Next up we crush a caravan with a tank before we play tug of war with a Scammel Explorer and a Bowden with a Land Rover in between. Then it's our explosive fire battle before we open the arena for our exhibitor free for all and then we have our amazing firework display. Don't forget to use the links in the description to jump to your favourite part. Let's get started. Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Tanks, Trucks and Firepower and our main arena activities are well and truly underway. We're starting this morning with our wheeled vehicle display. This is before we move on to the vehicle recovery exercise and then we are going to have our midday guns at 12 noon. Make sure you're ready for that. But first we've got our wheeled vehicle display. I'm now going to jump out to the conference point and have a look and have a chat with some of the many vehicles in the arena here with us. So we're starting Tanks, Trucks and Firepower this year with a wheeled vehicle display. As you can see, we've changed things around this year. We've only got one arena, one huge arena, which means we can fit loads more vehicles in there. Right there, good morning, sir. I picked on you because you're driving the brightest vehicle in the arena. Tell us, what have you brought in here? Uh, this is a Series 3 lightweight Land Rover, the 52nd to last ever built for the RAF. I think it's actually the brightest vehicle in the show. I think it is. Uh, this one, a Royal Air Force, because although this is a lightweight Land Rover, which of course was designed to be able to be airlifted and dropped into place very easily, uh, this one actually spent its life on an airbase. That's correct. Up in Scotland, on either Kinross or Kinloss airfields, it served on both. We've got a very important feature, this vehicle. Uh, sunroofs are an optional extra. They're kind of essential for this, to so make sure something's not landing on top of you. That's correct. It's, um, it's got a sunroof at the top because it was based on a helicopter um, you know, airfield. Um, so at least you can see if a helicopter's going to land on you. Go on and enjoy yourself out there, sir. Now then we move from the lightweight Land Rover, which could be pretty much airlifted to wherever you want to be, to this monstrosity here. Uh, this is an amphibious vehicle, it doesn't have doors at the side, so our driver's going to have to jump out of the roof. You've got your gas mask on, and that's not just for Covid, because this, well, this could go through anywhere in decontamination units. Yeah, so this vehicle is designed to go in after a chemical nuclear strike and find the safest passenger way to through using the uh, yellow black marker. Uh, this is a VRDM. Is it a VRDM too? Yes, VRDM too. So it's got the engine in the rear and on the front, uh, and a few other modifications like more engine power as well. And uh, as you go around, obviously, you've got the uh, front uh, scoop down at the moment. That would have been lifted up to keep the waste on the road over the top. Uh, you've also got a huge jet engine out the back of this. Yeah, so it's got a propeller hidden underneath the armor uh, plate in the back to protect it when it the vehicle's on the road, but it's, uh, the vehicle's fully amphibious so it can swim across uh, quite uh, large, gap, uh, large river crossings. Fantastic, such a treat to see this. You carry on there, sir. What a treat it is to see this vehicle. As it comes by, have a look at the back. You will see a triangular flap. This is where the jet engine is hidden. You'll also see the flag markers and the uh, flags are able to be deployed without anybody getting out of the vehicle. Of course, that is so important when you're running a decontamination unit. In fact, these vehicles were probably some of the first to go in after the Chernobyl accident. Now then, I picked on you, sir, because there are many Willis Jeeps in the arena, but of course, every Willis is slightly different. Which one have we got here? A Willis, a Ford? Hotchkiss. A Hotchkiss. An M201. An M201 Hotchkiss. Of course, a Willis Jeep, they just couldn't keep up with the demands on That's production, right. so they were licensed out. And you can see so many different variants here, and they all look pretty much the same, and all the parts could be bolted in and out. It's not unusual to find Ford stamped F bolts on this, because of course, yeah. he had to put his stamp on it somewhere, didn't he? Absolutely. <laughs> Because he was, uh, he was a bit overwhelmed and he, he didn't like the idea that Willis were beating him. Henry Ford was a, was a pretty tough customer to deal with. So uh, yeah, that's why he designed his own Jeep, which was exactly the same as the Willis more or less. And he used most of the Willis parts for it, but he didn't we tell you that. The brute from America is here. Morning, sir. How are you? Uh, oh, my God, thank you. Now then, 
You bought in a Humvee. This an original Humvee, where did it serve? This is original one, served in the first Gulf War and also in Somalia in uh, 2010, Mogadishu. Now has this got the diesel V8 in it? This has got the replacement diesel V8 6.5 uh, engine. It sounds like an absolute animal this ticking over and it's an absolutely huge thing because they use this for all sorts of things, not only people carriers but gun platforms, you name it. Yeah, it was used for a lot of things, um, a versatile vehicle. It was designed to be as wide as the trucks and the tanks um, so that the, uh, because the jeeps were getting um, stuck in the ruts and, uh, in convoy. Now, is this your vehicle? Yes. And I have a bit of a soft spot for this. A Gaz 69? That's right, yes. It's very rare in England, these. Very, very rare. Very rare, yeah. Especially the four door. We have the two door version for the soldiers, and this is the command car. So, the command car, so you would have had a driver in there, of course, commanders behind you. That's right, yes. Do you know much of the history of this vehicle? I bought this from Poland um, 10 years ago. So, I was in the Polish army, and uh, so that's it. Wasn't it? So why did you choose the Gaz 69? I've always liked, I liked the character, the styling of them. I used to have an Oaz, I used to have a Zill, but this is quite small and got a lot of character and great fun to drive. Now I have a huge soft spot for these because after the show last year I was lucky enough to drive a Gaz 69 and we did a full walk around for review of this vehicle and it was so it was so comfortable, in fact it was just as comfortable as an Austin Champ, which has got far superior suspension to this, but the Gas 69 is a wonderful vehicle, there's probably only about 20 or so of these in the UK, and yeah. like I say, a four-door version, so rare. It is very rare, yes, the four-door version. Um, I know there's a few people, friends, that want the four-door, and they've got the two-door, but they're more harder to get. They did a ratio about 10 to 1, I think about one of the command cars to about 10 of the two-door versions. Such a treat to see this, thank you very much. Uh, a Dodge weapons carrier. A Dodge weapons carrier. Now, what kind of weapons would have been made with our captains? Uh, anything from uh, not machine guns to ammunition, uh, base of supplies, fuel, etc. water. So this would have been essential to take in all of those. That would have been essential to running all of those essential goods up to the line. Absolutely, this particular one is a uh, 944 and she is a uh, what you brought in here? It's a AM General M916, um, 14 litre Cummins, 18 speed cat transmission on it. It's designed for the US for transporting all their tanks around. Um, they've done a road version of this which was 915. They've done a slight, another version of this which had another axle and that was the M920 and this, this was the one in the middle. Right, let's have a catch up with this. I've got to have a chat with you. What have you brought in here? I bought a Volvo C303. I have never seen one of these at this show before. Tell me all about this. It's Swedish and um, yeah, they're a bit far a few between, but you get a 4x4 and a six wheel version. It's uh, Sweden's last uh, Land Rover forward control. It does look like a forward control in many ways. If you squint, it does look pretty much exactly the same, but this Volvo four wheel drive or six wheel drive, if you've got the six wheel version, can I ask why one of these? Why? Because it's awesome and rare. It is awesome. How many of these are you going to see in the UK? Not many. Handful? Double figures? Yeah, probably a small handful. Well, such a treat to have this here with us. Thank you so much for bringing this in. I did genuinely think when I saw this at the bottom of the arena that it wasn't forward control. So glad we got to catch up with this. Thank you very much, sir. for you is our recovery demonstration. We're also setting up all the big guns. Norman, not a normal one. This is just one. 
of the bullets were going to, when I say bullet, this is a huge shell, 120 millimeter shell that's going in the Harris Mobat. It is indeed, it's very heavy. So we were on to some quick chat. Make it quickly, my legs are collapsing. <laughs> We've got a Fodden leading our demonstration here. Amazing piece of kit this. Just look at the arm of the winch on that. Absolutely incredible piece of kit. And now pay attention to the centre of our arena here. Just look at the way this vehicle goes up and down here. the wheel articulation at the back over here ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Look at the approach and departure on it. Not branded down at all. Amazing. That's absolutely unbelievable ladies and gentlemen. on the top ladies and gents if you want to get a photograph this is the time to do it and even able to reverse back over this trench no problem whatsoever like I say these were built to recover tanks so don't you worry about getting stuck in the car park we have got everything we need to get you out
Let's have a catch up. I believe, I believe we are going to start with a Colt handgun. Is that right? Who's got the Colt handgun? Come over here and join me, sir. Come over and join me. All right. You here. have got the privilege of firing the first shot on the third day of our 10th anniversary show. Thank you very much, sir. Now, you've got, this is a Colt 45? It's a Colt 45, yeah. 19, 19, 11. Are you able to take one of the bullets out of the clip to show us? Yes, I am. Let's have a look at this. So the size bullet in this, it's a 45. So 45, if you could just hold that up for me. Ladies and gentlemen, probably can't see that. I'll put this on video for you so you can watch this again later. Formidable gun, this, isn't it? I mean, it's not all about having the biggest gun. If you no. can't move it around, it's no, not good to you not. at all. No, definitely not. It was a stopper just to put you down really more than us. Fantastic. <laughs> now then, we're going to move on. What are we moving on to here? Is this a grease gun? It is indeed. Tell us about this year. But it was a paratrooper's weapon, it was small and, well, not so much light, but it was easy to stow, and it's called a good stopping power. Good stopping power. What size bullets have we got in this? Uh, 0.45. 0.45, so very similar to what we've just seen there. Are you all ready to go? Yeah, yeah. Magazine in. Magazine in, and we're caught up already. That's what we're hoping for. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for us. Thank you very much, sir. Now then, we're going to move on to... Oh, my Lord. What on earth have you bought in here? This is a captured German MG42. Fires 1,200 rounds per minute, and it was also known as Hitler's paintbrush or buzzsaw. 1,200 rounds a minute. The Germans, towards the end of the war, were advised um, to fire in short bursts, and they did actually turn the cyclic rate down a little bit to stop the Germans expending too much ammunition and getting into a frenzy. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for this? Here we go. Now then, we're going to move up. That's not a gun. That's a bazooka. What on earth are you doing with this? This is an M1A1 bazooka. It is a high-velocity rocket-propelled projectile designed to take out tanks, vehicles, and hardened positions like bunkers. Right, well, on that note, I'm going to stand back. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together for me, for our exhibitors. The man who you saw arrive in style was this man here. He's walking away from me. Hello, Andrew. You are a master of all trades. You fly helicopters, you fire guns, you drive tanks. Is there anything you can't do? There's lots I can't do, yeah. I'm no good as a commentator. No, you're not. That's why you've got this. So we're going to start with our 9mm pistol. Andrew, have you got a bullet for me? Here we go. I'm going to have to bring the camera nice and close. Just a teeny weeny little 9mm, but still deadly. So, Andrew, get your handgun at the ready. So we're going to move on to our sniper's rifle. Here is our bullet. This is a 7.62 bullet, also known as our 30 cal. Uh, it's going to be clipped into our sniper's rifle. So next up, ladies and gents, we're moving over to one of the guns which is mounted on the Land Rover. This is still the same size gun. It's still a 72. Being a sniper rifle, this is a machine gun. Ladies and
Now then, uh, we're going to step things up again, ladies and gents. We're going to go from 7.62 to a gun that comes in two cases. So, Andrew, over to you. Much louder. Ladies and gents, please put your hands together for me. He's going to have another shot for you as well. Here you go. Absolutely phenomenal. Ladies and gents, put your hands together for me. We're going to start with our 76mm, which is on top of the Scorpion, ladies and gents. Take your work. Next up, is it going to that? Just look at the size of this shell, ladies and gents. It's absolutely enormous. This is not just bigger than that young man's face, it's taller than him. Look at the size of that, ladies and gents. Harry, Norman, over to you. Look at the flames sticking out the top of that. That was absolutely formidable. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Next up. I do believe we are moving on to our 25 chamber. Over to you, Maria.
bottom.
You can have a go at one of these at the tank rides, which are just to the left-hand side of the arena. Or you can head over to youtube.com forward slash at Tim, where there is a full driving video, so you can see exactly what it's like inside the cab. So just starting to warm up the engines and gearboxes on these vehicles. Very interesting gearbox on these because it doesn't have a single reverse gear. It actually reverses the entire gearbox, which means they can go as fast forward as they can backwards. very light on their feet. They distribute their weight very well. They weigh in between 7 or 8 tons of these vehicles. It's worth knowing because they distribute their weight so their ground pressure is actually less than the ground man. Now pay attention as they pirouette around here. Doing a full 360 and if you look they are barely digging into the ground. If you did that in one of the challenges or charges that we had here earlier, or indeed that chieftain he would have made mid speed to the ground there. Now really starting to get the speed up here. To change gear in one of these, rather than having a clutch pedal, that pedal is usually the press to engage another gear. It's sort of like a motorbike uh, gear train, where you press down with your toes and so on, and your heels to go down. And it is just one up and one down now. Andrew has shifted his CRP to reverse, and Mick is going to chase him around the arena here. Just a few feet between those two vehicles, ladies and gents. I'll get even closer than that for you. A 
literally running side by side. Now, as they circle the arena, you can see in the centre that there are a few barrels set out marking out a danger zone. In there, it is laced with explosives and pyrotechnics. So when they enter that danger zone, be ready for some very loud explosions. Andrew slamming on the racer and this is going to pirouette around Andrew's CDR2. They've done this in previous years and actually clipped one mirror as they've got that close. channel that we've been mentioning all weekend there is already a full-length feature film from the 2019 show where we strapped seven cameras to these vehicles and you can see just how close they got you can literally get a first person view of what it was like to be in this demonstration complete with all of the explosions this year's feature film will be on youtube and that film of course will be free to watch anywhere in the world on any device whatsoever. Really flying around now, they've got those gearboxes and engines warmed up. The engines in these would originally have been a Jaguar straight six petrol engine, such as the ones you would have found in the storm cars of the day. Now here they come to you, they're going to go right around one another. Just look at how close they get here, ladies and gents. Friend, they're going to pull one out here around one another. Now starting to get the power down, and you can see the. The CBRTs literally jump as they change through the gears. Now then, Mick, where is he going? He's in the danger zone, but ready for some explosions. There's two for you ladies and gents, I did say that this does contain some very loud explosions indeed. If you think that's loud, wait until you see the finale of this film. Andrew there has taken the inside line, but Mick is lagging behind. He's really going to have to put his foot down if he's going to catch Andrew up now. Andrew's cut inside, cut inside. Another huge explosion. Now they will go over the mountain as well, as you can so you can see exactly how capable these vehicles are. Mick is dashing off, but Andrew is taking it low and slow. Here we go. Down into one and climbing up. Onto the knife edge, let's see if you can see saw. Backwards and forwards, look at the wheel articulation. Seven tons of CBRT there, literally dancing on top of a knife edge. Down he goes into the trench and back up the other side. Now yesterday, ladies and gents, we actually put a caravan in between some of those mounds and we had one of these fly off the top of it at more than 40 miles an hour and plow straight through it. That is going to be part of the 2020 feature film which will be on YouTube later in September. So if you want to be the first to see that film, make sure you subscribe on YouTube to our tip or indeed 
make sure you are following us on Facebook. It's at Tanks, Trucks and Firepower, where the film will be publicised as soon as it is live. Now, have your cameras at the ready, ladies and gents, because the two vehicles are lining up. They're going to drive straight through our danger zone. Be ready for some very loud bangs and explosions. Let's see when they come together if we're going to get one more explosion out of the guys. Oh, ladies and gents, please put your hands together for me. Brothers, ladies and gents, as you can see, we've brought up what remains of a Land Rover Freelander. Don't feel sorry for this thing, it's completely rotten underneath. And as you can see, uh, it has been involved in a rollover. This was a rollover that happened yesterday when I was cut out the inside of it. It's been set a challenge. Can I pull that caravan with that car up here? So we're going to give that a go. Um, can't promise it's going to work because although it looks like it's four-wheel drive, they've taken the prop shaft off, so it's only front-wheel drive. <laughs> trucks and firepower. This year we're going to do something different. You've seen this Land Rover. This is the Land Rover that I got cut out of twice this weekend. We're now going to try and pull it apart. We've got Scammel Explorer and we've got our version of a ground anchor. We've got a Foden with us as well and these two are going to latch onto this car and they're going to have a tug of war.
a tank trucks and firepower I get cut out of three vehicles usually this weekend we've only got two so we're going to copy out of this one twice you can see those linked in the description below you can see me be cut out of it when it's upside down you can see me be cut out of it when it's the right way up and also you can see me be cut out of another car as well with a full roll cage in it Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for our firepower battle. Before we begin, ladies and gentlemen, have you had a good day today? Yeah. Are you sure? Have you had a good day today? Yeah. Right then, let's do it then, shall we? As you can see, we've already got a vehicle on the move at the bottom of the arena. He is scouting out for us. This scorpion is looking out down at the bottom of the arena for us. He's going past. The access down there, we've heard over the radio that these guys have tested positive for COVID. <laughs> Clearly you didn't get the updates on Facebook, which was you're not welcome. Now if you want to access discounted tickets, make sure you follow us on Facebook, because they will be released in the next couple of weeks. So Brian, the driver of the Scorpion at the bottom of the arena there, he's scouted out, he's in position now, shot fired, and that was very close to their final vehicle. That was a warning shot for them if there ever was one. Now shooting back at them, and that is their final vehicle taken out. Flames licking out under the chassis there. Who's going to take the next shot? Will it be us or will it be them? Firing back towards us. Whoa, that was very close to us. Not happy about that at all, ladies and gents. Brian shooting from afar there. Shot fired and he's taken out vehicle number seven. That is smoking away. I don't think that vehicle is going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Now Brian's lining up, is he going to take another shot now? Shot from afar. Another huge explosion, you can see the smoke there, the white smoke of surrender. We're not done with you yet. Shot fired, whoa ladies and gentlemen, huge explosion there. Bad news for them, that was their porter potty. Oh, we didn't see that one coming, did we, ladies and gents? We're not in the mood to be fired on. Do they not know who we are up here? Brian, fire. Brian has taken a shot very close to those barrels there. That's the. Oh, look at that shot there. A centre hit of their parade. Oh, look at that, we're going fishing, ladies and gents. Water being jettisoned up 600 feet in the air. Shot fired. Oh dear, that's their petrol supply gone. There's smoke and there's flames. It really is all over. I hope they're not planning on having a barbecue. Another shot fired. That's vehicle number three gone. There's not many left for them now, ladies and gents. Pouring away down there. Brian, fire. Brian taking a shot. Vehicle number one taken out. Surely there can't be many left for them. Surely they're going to want to retreat. Ladies and gentlemen, look towards the tank graveyard. Because there is a JDAM, an airstrike coming in for you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for me. I think you'll all agree that that is one way of putting firepower in that total. I think a few car alarms are going up there. Ladies and gents, did you enjoy that demonstration? Fantastic. Right, well, don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen.
ladies and gents, because now we are going to open up this arena to all of our exhibitors. This is where we have no idea what they're going to bring in. It's absolute anarchy in here. We've had everything from motorcycles up to cheap and tanks running around in here, and that's all coming up for you in just a couple of minutes' time as soon as the guys have cleared the arena. Ladies and gents, before you head off, please can you put your hands together once more for all of the staff here at Tanks, Trucks and Firepower. this video i really hope you've enjoyed this video from tanks trucks and firepower 2020 thank you very much if you came and joined us on the showground today if you missed the show this year don't worry we'll be doing it all again next year head to facebook.com and search for tanks trucks and firepower if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up check out my channel and maybe give it a subscribe until next year we will see you again at tanks trucks and firepower Oh, 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 oh,